Hello and welcome to this session in which we will discuss an important topic in auditing and that's audit documentation. When you think of audit documentation, think of a firm called Arthur Anderson and Arthur Anderson is now rest in peace. It's gone. It used to be one of the big five. We used to have the big five. Arthur Anderson was the fifth one. But Arthur Anderson is gone and the reason is because they help other companies commit fraud, notably Enron. So why do I have this shredder on the screen? Well, because when Arthur Anderson were accused of committing fraud with Enron, what did they start to do? They started to shred the audit documentation. Therefore, audit documentation is a very important topic when it comes to auditing. So audit documentation comprised the record of conducted audit procedures. Remember, we learned about the audit procedures that will help support the evidence. Well, if those audit procedures are gone, how do we know how you came up with that conclusion? So if you're shredding your paperwork, you're trying to hide something. There are four purposes for audit documentation. Besides when you are being sued, you have to provide the paperwork. You also have to have proper audit documentation for planning the audit. Obviously, you always have to have a proper, proper audit documentation because every year you're performing the audit and people will change. You're going to have employee turnover so they have to look to see what happened in the prior year let alone even if it's not required you're going to see it is required you have to have paperwork from year to year so to plan the audit audit documentation is important to record of evidence and test outcome what did you do record that and have it in documentation data for determining the appropriate type of report how did you come up with that opinion show me the evidence Material for review by supervisors and partners. Also, audit documentation will be used by supervisors and review for training, as well as looking at mistakes and learning from the mistakes. The first thing we're going to do is, is we're going to look at the purpose of audit documentation. Those are the four purposes. We're going to look at each one separately. Then we'll talk about the permanent files, the current files, retention policies, and other issues that deals with audit documentation. Let's go ahead and get started. Plan Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. Planning for the audit, one of the four purposes. To ensure proper audit planning, essential reference data must reside within the file, within the audit files. You have to have some documentation. The files would include a wide range of planning information, such as internal control description. That will be part of your planning. You're not going to start without knowing anything about the internal control. In individual audit area time budget. When you start the planning, you have to document how much time you are going to be spending on cash, on receivable, on inventory, on property, plant, and equipment. The audit program. You have to have the audit program and the outcome from the previous year audit. So this is part of the planning. You need all this documentation. Well, the second purpose is to record of evidence and test of outcomes. Audit documentation here is essential. Why? Because you're going to need a record of verifying that you are being in compliance with audit standards, capable of demonstrating effective planning. You have to show this planning within the audit. Appropriate evidence. You have to have the appropriate evidence. And accurate reporting to authorities. Because if you're being sued or if you are being reviewed by an authority like the PCAOB, you have to show what you did. Key aspect of audit documentation at this stage include itemized tested elements. Look, show them exactly what you did. Itemize those items. What are the significant findings? What did you find? And resolution action as well as the basis for your conclusion. Those are very important. And again, each client will have different significant findings. Each client will have different tested, tested element. But you have to show them whatever those elements are. Also, show me how you came up with this opinion on the audit report. So audit documentation will help auditors in determining if they, gather, if they gathered enough 
sufficient appropriate evidence because remember you have to have sufficient appropriate evidence how do i know this from your audit documentation this data is also valuable for assessing the fairness of the financial statements and disclosure based on the audit evidence also the documentation should back the disclosure of crucial audit matters in the audit report everything that you have in the audit report you have to have some sort of an evidence for it and at the end of the report you want to keep this information because the information gets reviewed audit files serve as the main reference for supervisors reviewing the staff work ensuring proper supervision and validating the audit process because if you do the work that's fine show me the work the you're the staff you did the work then someone else a senior a senior staff or a partner usually would review the work so the documentation would show that who performed the work what date who reviewed the work and the date it was reviewed so the file assists also in tra training planning and coordinating future audits so if you see someone is not doing their work because there's a lot of reviews a lot of mistakes you may want to send them to training or assign them to a separate assignment confidentiality of the audit files well the AICPA code of professional conduct emphasizes the importance of maintaining client confidentiality and we spoke about this in a separate recording because auditors gather data during the audit, salary details, pricing strategies, cost data, they cannot share this information and hire the client. You have to protect the audit files unless you are required by law, which we talked about when we talked about the Code of Professional Conduct. Documentation retention, how long you should keep those documents. That's important. Well, auditing standard require private company, which is the AICPA, to keep the records for five years. Public companies, a little bit longer, seven years, especially after Enron, backed by penalties if you have, if you did an intentional destruction. Remember, audit files are the property of the auditors. Under audit documentation, we have the permanent files and we have the current files. We have to know what goes in what. Permanent files store historical or ongoing data, data that's going to stay with you from year to year offering a reliable source of information utilized across the year. So what would the permanent file include? Well, it will include copies of the corporate documents like articles of incorporation, bylaws, bond indenture, long-term contract, pension plan, leases, and other similar document. That's gonna be with you from year to year. Analysis of accounts from prior year with, un with ongoing significance. Not all account, account that we think are important. And it depends, it could be fixed asset, it could be long-term debt, it could be goodwill data that's relevant to understanding internal control and evaluating internal control because usually the internal control should not stay should stay the same and if there's any control deficiencies we want to have this in the permanent file and the previous year audit analytical procedures for reference and comparison that's going to be in the permanent files what's in the current files current means current for this year so hopefully this will help you understand what will go in there because you might see multiple choice questions asking you, is this part of the permanent file? Is this part of the current files? Well, current files, as I mentioned, include all documentation for the current year. And this will include the audit program. The audit program should change from year to year. It should be similar, but should change. Working trial balance, of course, every year you have to have a different trial balance, and that trial balance should be supported by lead schedule. What is a lead schedule? For example, if you have many accounts of cash, you have a list of them, and for example, bank reconciliation, where can you find them? Account receivable, a list of receivable, um, organized maybe by uh, dollar amount or alphabetically, a lead schedule for everything. Any adjusting entries, any proposed adjusting entries for material misstatement will be part of this year current files, supporting schedules, and here we could see a lot of them, analysis, like the difference in balances, dollar amount as well as percentages, trial balance or list, again, the, the ending trial balance as well, reconciliation of amount, bank reconciliation, AP, AR reconciliation, payroll re reconciliation, or sorts of reconciliation, analytical procedures, summary of procedures, what did you do, summary of procedures, examination of support and documentation, Informa other informational document like the tax return, SEC filing, as well as outside documentation. Anything that's relevant for this year. Let's take a look at a multiple choice questions from Farhat Lectures. Which of the following statement regarding the audit working paper is correct? Good. We have one correct, three that are incorrect. And when you have three incorrect, 
try to find the most obvious one and eliminate them. So for example, if we look at C, the paperwork must be in paper form. Not at all, they can be electronic. So C is out, C is so obvious. But you want to see this. This is even, if you don't know anything, if you, if you see this question, you could eliminate C immediately, okay? A, they should be delivered to the client once the audit report is issued. Should they be delivered to the client? Who owns the audit working paper? The auditor. Therefore, if you know that it's the ownership of the auditor, therefore A is out. We're now, we're down to 50-50. Let's look at the short sentence first. They, sh they provide additional support for the client recorded amounts. Is this the purpose of the working paper? Or they should indicate who performed the audit work the date the work was performed, who reviewed the work, and the date of that review. With paperwork, are they are they to support the client record? Are, are we working for the client? Not at all. We're not working for the client. We're not there to support their amount. Maybe their internal audit department, that's what they're trying to do, but not us as external auditor. The answer is B. They would indicate who performed the work, when, who reviewed the work, and the date of that review. So the answer is B as in boy. What should you do now? Go to Farhat Lectures, look at additional resources, especially MCQs, true false lectures. That's going to help you understand the concept of audit documentation. Invest in yourself, whether you are a CPA exam candidate or an accounting student. Good luck, study hard, and stay safe.